it's another case for that most famous of all men hunters, the detective whose ability at solving crime is unequaled in the history of detective fiction. Nick Carter, Master Detective. Today's curious adventure, The Swing Shot Murders. Or Nick Carter and the Mystery of the Broken Window. <laughs> In just a moment, we'll find out how Nick Carter solved the mystery of the slingshot murders. But first, here's something worth thinking about. A lovely home adds to the joy of living. And just as thousands of American homemakers have brought new beauty to their walls with Chemtone, the miracle wall finish, so are they learning that Linux self-polishing wax gives their floors a suddenly new luster without tiresome rubbing. Easily wiped on, Linux self-polishing wax dries to a tough, elastic finish that resists wear amazingly because it contains so much genuine Carnaba wax with no gum, shellac, or resin in it to chip or crumble. It resists water and dirt, too, so that soil is safely removed from the surface with a damp cloth or mild suds. And Linux self-polishing wax is the non-skid floor finish, resisting slip even when water is spilled on it. The underwriter's laboratories who seals on each bottle have proved this. Ask for Linux self-polishing wax at your paint hardware or department store. Headquarters for all three great Linux home brightness and Chemtone, the miracle wall finish that dries in one hour. And now for today's mysterious adventure with Nick Carter. Our story opens in Nick's office, where he and Pat here are having a good-natured argument. Good-natured, that is, until about now. But, Nick, I don't think that's true. Take me, for example. Since I've been working with you, I've learned to observe things I never saw before. Perhaps, Patsy. You've undoubtedly improved while you've been my assistant, but I still say that you really see very little that goes on around you in spite of all my training. Oh, Nick, anybody would think that I... All right, Patsy, let's see. How many steps are there from the sidewalk up to the front door of your house? Why, there are... Let me see, there are... How high up the floor are the windows in your bedroom? There are about two. No, no, one and a half. What color is the two-cent stamp? Red. Good for you. Thought you were going to say shot two. Can you make a card office? Is Mr. Carter there? Oh, thank you, Jimmy. Sure. How are you, Miss Bowen? I'm fine, thanks. How are things with you? Pretty good. Can I talk to you, Nick? Of course, Penny. Here he is. Hello, Penny. How's my special assistant this afternoon? That's what I called you about, Nick. I think there's going on down here. Could you come over? Well, what is it, Penny? Trouble? Gee, Nick, I don't know. But it looks bad to me. Well, can't you tell me what it is? Not on the phone, Nick. You know, you always tell me to be careful what I said on the phone. Some of the gang might be listening in. And quite right, Penny. All right, I'll take you one over there. You got your new stand? Yeah. Pass your car down the block away so they can't see it. I'll be waiting. Okay, Penny, get down right away. So long. Hmm, what was that all about, Nick? Sounded very important. Penny thought it was important, too. But he wouldn't say what it was. He's seen something and thinks I ought to know about it. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's what you get for being a hero, Nick. He thinks you're just about the greatest guy in the world. His ambition in life is to be a great detective like you. Yes, I know it. And ever since his old man died in my arms, I've spent a hundred thought to keep an eye on him. And he's smart, too. Never forget things I've told him about how to see what goes on around him. Some people I know, not very far from here, could profit by his example. Okay, Mr. Carter, okay. Get in your car and be on your way. We need a little peace and quiet here. You and your wise crack. All right, Patsy. Since I'm not wanted here, I'll go call on Penny. I hope he's got something more exciting up his sleeve than I think he has. <laughs> Come on. Sorry, Penny, but you know how traffic is. Sure, I know. Come around the back of the stand, Nick, so nobody will see us talking together. Okay, Penny. Now, what's up? You see across the street there? You see the bank? Yes. And you see the empty stairs on each side of the bank? Yes. Well, a little while ago, a big black sedan pulled up and two guys got out and went into the vacant store on this side of the bank. And two more guys got out and went into the empty store on the other side. And look, the sedan drove away and left the four guys there. That's odd. Any idea of what might be going on? Oh, yeah, Nick. There's several factories around here, and today's the day the bank downtown sends the money to this bank for the payroll. Tomorrow, sir, do you know? I see what you mean, Penny. You think those men may be planning to hold up the bank for the money gets here, huh? Eh? Yeah, gosh, Nick. Don't it look like that to you? Could be, Penny. Yes. Don't look suspicious. But Penny, robbery's not in my line. This is a job for Lieutenant Riley in the city police. I'll give him a ring and tell him what you saw. You'll have to hurry, Nick. It's almost four o'clock, and that's when the car comes to the meet. Well, I'll phone Riley now. Maybe he can get one of the squad guards. Yes, yeah, come to Yes, and I'm a car, all right. And it's stopped in front of the bank. They're starting to load the money, and they don't know they're Wait here. I'll run them, Mandy. Get back, Penny. Keep out of the way. I'll see if I can help the guards by picking up some of the thugs with my gun. Get out, Nick. Stop it, you I won't. I'll stay behind this pole. Get out, Nick. I think so, but I'm... 
Nothing wrong with me. Eh? Nothing except that you've lost about a quarter of blood. There's a nasty hole in the side of your neck. But I can't stay here doing nothing. I've got to get up to those thugs. I've got to get out of here. Are you hurt, Daddy? Oh, it's only a scratch, Patsy. But this sword wants to keep me here cooped up like a pet rabbit. How is he, Doctor? Please. He, he's got a bad hole in the side of his neck. Oh. Not so fatal, he'll get over it, but he's lost a lot of blood, too. He's got to be quiet and good nature. Now, Doctor. look, Doc, look. Nature's going to have a tough time doing anything for me if you keep me here worrying because I can't get out. Nature's going to stay here and like it. Good girl. If you don't behave, I'll call some attendants and have them undress you. Then you'll have to stay here whether you like it or not. But, Patsy, I tell you, there's nothing. Yes, I want you. Yes, yes. Oh, Penny. Yes. What are you doing here? I want to see you. Yes. Here I am, Penny. I'm coming, son. You get right back in that bed, Nick, Carter, if you don't. Sorry, right, Patsy. But Penny wants me. Why, Penny? What happened to you? Oh, nothing much, Nick. A bullet got me in the leg, that's all. That's all. Well, that's enough. Are you hurt that, son? No, Doc says I'll be all right in a few days. But I've got something to tell you, Nick. What is it, son? You know when I yelled at you just before you got shot? Yes, I remember. So I saw a guy standing in the window of a house across the street from the bank. He was going to look out of something. And just as I looked up, I saw him in at you. So I yelled, what are you saying? Did you get a good look at him, son? No, but I know which window it was. Good boy. Which one was it? You'll see. I busted it with my slingshot so you know it. I put a marble right to it. And I'm a free shot, too. I thought maybe you'd find a clue then, if you look. Penny, you're a wonder. I'm proud to have you for an assistant. It was a window on the first floor of a brown house. You can't miss it. Yes, sir, Penny, I'm proud to have you for an assistant. Nick, are you going to get back to bed or do I... I can't go back to bed, Patsy. I've got to go places. Things to do. Can't let Penny die, not after the way you fix things up for me. Nick. Yes, Penny? Take this with you, Nick. It's as good as a gun sometimes. I use it a lot. Why, well, thanks, Penny. That plane shot of yours may come in handy. I'll keep it right where I can get at it fast if I need it. Oh, there you are, Nick. Oh, you're all right, Nick. I certainly am all right. You got any other gang? No, no, Nick, we didn't. We found the car they were in. Rick, six blocks away, but there was nobody in it. The car was stolen to us, so that's no help. Did they get much? Yes. Three guys were killed, one in the hospital, and a hundred thousand dollars in small bills is missing. That's all I know. Now you've got a lead in the world right now. Well, I have, thanks to Penny here. Penny? Who's Penny? My assistant, and one of the best assistants a man's ever had. He just gave me some dope that may crack the whole case wide open. What is it, man? Tell me, quick. Not yet, Riley. This is confidential between Penny and me. Huh? If it works out, I'll let you know. Well, Penny, so long. I'll be seeing you. So long, Nick. Good luck. Nick Carter, where are you going now? I'm hot on the trail, Patsy, and nothing can stop me. Well, if I can't stop you, at least I'm going with you. You certainly can't drive a car in your place. Okay, then. Come on. Time for racing. Well, don't you need some help, Nick? I'll send some of the boys with you. No, Riley. This is a one-man job, and I'm the man who's going to try to do it. I wish you hadn't come. There may be trouble. You may just as well save your breath, Mr. Carter, because I'm going wherever you're going, and that's that. You can't drive in your condition. I could if you'd let me. Well, I'm not going to let you, so that's that. I don't know what gets into you women. When you make up your mind, the team of horses couldn't change it. You ready to tell me where you're going? I can't keep on driving blindly all around the city, Miss. All right, all right. I give up. I'm going back to the scene of the robbery. What are you going to do there? That, my nosy young friend, is strictly my business. Okay, okay. I'd feel a lot safer if I knew what you were planning to do. Ah, it's dark now. You can pull up just around the corner from the bank. I'll get out there. Then you'll go back to the office. How will you get back? Don't worry about me. I can take care of myself. I hope so. Is this where you want to go? Yes, drop me here. (laughs) Now remember you, back to the office. Okay, bully. But I don't like you going anywhere alone as weak as you are. It's still enough counts in this business, Patsy, not muscle. I'll get going. I've got work to do. So Nick is going alone to investigate the house where the killers were who shot him. Does he have any idea what dangers lie ahead of him? And will he find any clues to the killers? We'll see in just a moment. Have you been wishing for a furniture polish that will clean your furniture too? Linux Clean Polish, the modern protection for your furniture's beauty, saves one complete step by cleaning as it polishes, without tires and rubbing. Learn firsthand how much time and effort Linux Clean Polish saves. Linux Clean Polish removes that cloudy dust and polish accumulation in one quick, easy application that also does away with fingerprints and helps conceal ugly scratches. And Linux Clean Polish dries hard, leaving no oily film to attract additional dust to make additional work. 
So try it and see how simple it can be to clean and polish your furniture at the same time. Ask your dealer for Linux. L-I-N dash X. Linux Clean Polish. You'll find it at your paint, hardware, or department store where all three great home brightness and Chemtone, the Miracle Wall Finish, are featured. And now, back to our story. We left Nick weeks from loss of blood climbing the stairs to the fourth floor of the old tenement house, trying to find some clue to the killers who shot him and robbed the bank. As we were joining, he's nearly reached the top. I wish it wasn't the fourth floor. I don't feel as ambitious as I did. Well, that's a break. Only one apartment on the street side. And there's that one home, judging by the light under the door. Well, here it goes. Well, what do you want? I'm investigating the bank holdup across the street this afternoon. Bank holdup? Yes. You knew the bank was held up, didn't you? Yeah, I heard. I was out working at the time. What do you want to get in here for? I want to look out of your windows. He's like this. We have a witness who says he saw the whole thing from the window next door on this level. He's a cranky old guy with a reputation for stretching the truth, so I want to check up on him. I'd like to look from your windows and see if he really could have seen what he said he did. Sounds nutty to me. Why don't you look out of his windows? I did, and I still can't be sure. So I want to check all the windows on this floor. There ain't no use in... Well, okay, come on in. Thanks. I won't be long. Mind if I put this window shade up? Put yourself. I don't can't see much from here. I'll try the other window. Hmm. Can't see anything from here either. Well, I guess the old guy was dreaming. Couldn't see the bank at all with an armored car standing in front of it. You satisfied now? So far, yes. Okay to look at the other window? Yeah, I guess so. My wife's in there. I'll get you dressed. There's no broken windows in this room. And none of them didn't be either. Somebody coming in, Mary. You dressed? Okay, Chopper, you can go in. Thanks. Sorry to bother you, lady. I won't be but a minute. Okay, take your time. No broken windows in here either. Penny must have made a mistake in the window. How about it, Chopper? Ah, I guess the old guy must have... Hey, do you have any children in the house? Sure. No kids? What? Oh, just saw a marble here on the floor and wounded. Well, come on. If you've seen all you want, you better... Just a minute. Just a minute. I want to take another look at this window. Get your hands up, flat foot. Make it snappy. Well, I don't see what well, you don't, huh? You come up here looking for a broken window, didn't you? And when you didn't find them, you go around poking your fingers in the putty. Well, really, don't now... Don't try to kid me. I've been watching it. So you found a window with a soft putty where we put the new pane of glass in. Well, it won't do you no good now. All right, Slug. I'll take over now. I take the honor. So you're Slug's wife. Yeah. <laughs> I'd never have known you in that woman's outfit. Pretty clever. A lot cleverer than you, copper. You come right up here just begging for it, didn't you? I thought we'd give it to you for keeps out in front of the bank this afternoon, but I'm glad now we didn't. This is going to be more fun. We can make it last longer. Burn him down. No, no. slug. Shooting so quick. I got a better plan for this dumb punk than that. Go right ahead, gentlemen. Don't mind me. But do you mind if I put my arms down? Get his gun, slug, sure, Jake. Quite a surprise to find this here couple in it. Never figured we'd hide out right here alongside the bank, did you? And dumb cops probably are searching all over the city, looking for where we went to. And all the time, we're right here. Hey, Jake. What? These guys are regular arsenal. Three guns he's got. I don't care how many he's got. Take them all away from me. <laughs> hey, Jake. Look at this. What? He's got three guns and a slingshot. Are you kidding me? A cop carrying a slingshot around to keep the big bad robbers away. What a dumb muggy is. Oh, look now, Slug, don't take all the flat foot weapons away. Where's your manners? Uh, leave him take the slingshot. Why, sure. Here, Mr. Dick, I'll put it right back in your pocket where it came from. Maybe you'll save your life with it. That's a joke, Jake. Look what Santa brought us to play with, Pete. Well, I'll be a monkey's uncle. Where'd he blow in? Walk right up the stairs, all by himself. <laughs> Look, Copper, did you ever have a lighted cigar butt jam in your eye? That's just for a starter. Then we're going... Oh, no, you're not. Jake, run out for him, son. Give me that gun, Jake. Give me that or I'll put your arm off. Oh, Get out of the light, Jake. Oh, you're going to give it... Oh. Ah, nice work, Slug. You knocked him cold. Oh, I'll fix him for this. He nearly broke my wrist. Shall I croak him now, Jake? No. 
Wait till we get ready to leave. Then we'll play games with him. Tie him up for good. We'll get the stuff ready to move out when the boys bring the car tonight. Then we'll come back here and take care of him. Over on your face, Blackfoot. So I can get the ropes on you. Wouldn't he like to know that we got all that dough hidden in the empty warehouse right next door here? It's a little hole through the wall of the apartment here, and we got a foolproof hideout. Yeah. Sir, if he was only smart like this, I'd be afraid of him. Come on, look at him. You're smart as Jake. There, copper. That takes care of you. Try and get out of them ropes. Hey, what you let the flat foot in here for anyway, Buck? Don't be dumb, Pete. If I hadn't, he'd have smelled something funny and come back again with a wagon. Mm. Anyways, how'd I know he was wise to the busted crack? You know, Jake, maybe he was so smart at that. Yeah? What's he do? Well, you thought it was so smart to double back here with the cash and hide out right across the street from the bank and the first thing the cop smells his way right up here. So what? Only one cop come to me. And he ain't walking out of here, is he? Well, no. Who's running this business anyway? You are, Jake. Okay, okay. All right. Now, Pete, you and me are going back into the warehouse and fix up the stuff ready to leave. Shrug, you stay here with the copper. Clean up the joint goods. Fingerprints and any kind of junk that might leave a tip. Don't leave nothing. We'll be back when we took care of the dough. Okay, Jake. I'll watch him. <laughs> Now, Pete, slowly and easily. Take the guns over toward me. Okay. Now, stay where you are. Now, 
I'll take those guns over. That's better. Now what? What else can I tell you? Now I want you to stay right there. And I'll stay right here. Wait a minute. It's all right, Jake. He can't last long now. All we got to do is wait here till he falls over. And he's lost so much blood now, he can't hardly sit up. Sure. How long do you think you're going to hold out, copper? Long enough to see you three thugs in jail. I bet that don't nobody know you're up here. So how do you expect to be rescued? I sent a messenger out the window to tell my friends I'm here waiting for them. Hey, look, Jake, the window is busted. Tell her this flat foot will be out cold long before anybody comes up here. Unless it's the boys with a car come to take us out of here. You, uh, think you can last that long, Copper? Yeah, you'll never be able to hold that gun on us for another two hours. You might as well give up now, Copper. Think so? I want to take you three mugs in so bad, I'll... I'll wait all night. I have to. Get back. I can see you. Don't you try any funny business with me? Oh, he's almost gone, Jake. Uh, In a couple of minutes, and he'll be out like a light. Yeah. Well, as he got that gun, we'll rush it. I don't know how he lasted this long. Stay right there. Stay there, both of you. I can wait. Just as long as... As long as... Now. He's gone. Come on. Oh, let me see you. Get the hands up, you guys. Oh, Nick. Oh, hello, Patsy. Riley. What's going on here, Nick? These are the thugs that dug up the bank. Oh. Money's in the warehouse. Next door. You're no wonder, Nick. Take care of these fellas, Sergeant. Send a couple of men to get the money out of the warehouse, like Nick says. Oh, Nick, I think they're afraid for you. Did they hurt you? Well, I'm, I'm all right, Patsy. Just a little, a little tired. That's all. Ah, she's a great girl, that Patsy. When she left you, she phoned me and told me what you were trying to do, Nick. So I got some of the men together and killed them as quick as I could. And then we got a flat tire and we'd have been here sooner. And look, you here's your badge, Nick. Little bent, but as good as new. <laughs> Thanks, Riley. Lucky you found it. Yeah, it wasn't me that found it. It was Patsy yourself here. You found it, Patsy? Yes, Nick. When Riley spotted the broken window and we came out. But don't ever let me hear you say again that I'm not observant. Maybe I don't know how many slips there are in front of my house. But when it comes to things that count, I can see them. <laughs> a moment, Nick and Patsy will bring you a preview of next week's exciting case. How often you've had floors or woodwork surfaces ruined when hot grease, alcohol, fruit acid, perfume, or boiling water was spilled. Linux Clear Gloss, the modern protection for linoleum and all wood surfaces, resists all these liquids and at the same time keeps dirt on the surface where it's easily wiped away. And Linux Clear Gloss provides a really lasting protection for your floors and woodwork. A tough yet lustrous surface that wears and wears. Yet Linux Clear Gloss is easy to apply, for it flows on readily and evenly without brush marks, drying to a glossy finish that keeps its beauty a long, long time. That's why thousands of American homemakers depend upon this sparkling, transparent finish to keep their homes bright and shiny. Get Linux Clear Gloss now at your nearest paint, hardware, or department store. If your dealer hasn't received his supply of the three great Linux home brightness, he'll have them soon. Ask him to save one or all of them for you. Acme will see that he gets them, and you get them, as quickly as possible. Now let's hear from Nick Carter himself. How about next week's adventure, Nick? Got something exciting coming up? I certainly have, Ken. If you take a transcontinental train stalled high in the mountains in a raging blizzard and mix it with the murder of an opera singer and her maid... And add the theft of $150,000 worth of jewels from the said opera singer and a snow slide down the mountain right where the train is stalled. And you have the puzzle and crime that I was up against. Sounds pretty complicated to me, Nick. How'd you find the solution? Well, the solution depended on two things. A broken bottle of perfume and a chow dog that was lost in the snow. You certainly make it sound attractive. Did it work out okay? You should ask that, knowing Nick. Sorry, what do you call the story? I call it Murder on Mad Mountain. Or the Mystery of the Opera Singer's Dog. So long for now. So long, everybody. And so long to you, Nick and Patsy. We'll be looking forward to seeing you again next week. Next week, at the same time, listen to another curious experience of Nick Potter, Master Detective, entitled Murder on Mad Mountain. Or Nick Carter and the Mystery of the Opera Singer's Dog. <laughs> Nick Carter, Master Detective, is a copyright feature of Street and Smith Publications, Incorporated. It is presented at the same time and over these same stations by the three great Linux home brighteners. Linux Clear Gloss, Linux Cream Polish, 
and Linux self-polishing wax. This is Mutual.